Hi everyone, and welcome to a Tech Talk video from Eric's Electronics Workbench. So today I'm going to show you how to build a very useful component tester that requires only several components, a transformer, a resistor, and any oscilloscope that has an XY display mode. So it doesn't need to be a scope meter, it can be any traditional type of oscilloscope as well. It can be analog or digital. And a scope meter like this is isolated from ground, and that can be useful in some applications, but again, it's not required. A traditional oscilloscope that has a ground reference is perfectly fine in most uh, applications. And optionally, you may want to also use a variac in the setup, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So, let's get started. All right, so I've assembled the circuit for the component tester. So we have the transformer, the resistor, of course the oscilloscope, and a variety of test leads just connecting everything together. So if you're following along and you want to build this project, I'm not suggesting that you make the connections in the way that I have it set up here. This is, of course, just for demonstration purposes. These components should be contained in a plastic enclosure, use appropriate precautions when working on this AC line coming into the transformer, and including a fuse on the AC line would be a good idea as well. Now this transformer could be substituted out by using a wall warp type transformer, and that would probably be more convenient in most cases anyways. So to power this, I'm using my current limited variac and isolation transformer. So if there is a short between these two lines right here, there's an incandescent lamp that would just glow very brightly. However, there's still a shock hazard across this AC line. So when this is powered up, in no way am I coming anywhere near these wires over here. So again, if you're following along, you are doing so at your own risk. So take care and be safe. Now these wires right here, these two test leads, are where the component will go that we're testing. And everything on the secondary of this transformer is very low voltage, so there's really no shock hazards on the secondary side. But again, use precautions on that primary side. Alright, so let's take a look at the schematic right here. So, it's a very simple circuit. And taking a look right here at the uh, transformer, it's 120 volts AC on the primary and 6.3 volts AC on the secondary. If you're in a country that has 240 volts on the mains as a standard, of course use appropriate transformer. And this uh, 6.3 volt AC secondary, that voltage could vary. You could maybe use 5 volts or maybe up to 9 volts. Something in that range is perfectly fine. Now, if we take a look here, this connection comes up here, it goes to two different resistors, and then it goes over here to the vertical or Y input on the oscilloscope. Now I'm only using one resistor, this 3.3K ohm half watt resistor, and you can see it says out of circuit, and of course this setup would be considered out of circuit testing. So if you want to do in circuit testing, you can add an optional switch and another resistor right here that's a 330 ohm half watt, but I've omitted that resistor in this switch for this test setup. So if we take a look right here, on the uh, transformer, this is a center tap that's not needed. So this yellow test lead right here connects to one of the secondary wires right there. Comes around over here to the resistor. And then this red wire right here is going around, comes up to the oscilloscope. I believe it's this one right here. Yep, it's this input on this channel uh, A right here. Okay? So the cha on this oscilloscope, channel A is the vertical or Y input. And then the other side of the resistor goes to the scope common ground, and it comes down here to one of the uh, test leads to the component. So that's this black test lead right here. So that's the other side of the resistor, and then this black test lead right here goes around, comes up to this point right here. Now on this uh, oscilloscope, the uh, channels have isolated ground, so I have a jumper that comes over here. It's this right here behind, and it goes over to the other channel, so it's just tying the grounds together. If your oscilloscope has common grounds on all the channels, of course you wouldn't need to do that. And these are just adapters that go from these banana jacks to the BNC inputs on the scope. So if we look at the schematic again, you can see the other side of the transformer right here goes to the horizontal or X input on the oscilloscope, and it comes down to the other test probe. And then that, of course, is this test probe right here. And that, follow that back around, it's right here, makes this junction on the uh, secondary side. This red wire right here comes around, goes over, and into this other channel. And then these patterns that you can see down here are the displays that we'll be seeing on the oscilloscope. So when we have a short circuit, there's a vertical line. An open circuit is a horizontal line. Resistance ends up being some type of a sloping line between these two extremes. Capacitance is an open circle this way. In a diode, you end up seeing this L. And if you test a Zener diode, you'll see another knee in that uh, uh, L shape. We'll take a look at that when we get to a Zener diode test. And we can also test inductors, and the inductor, it basically, instead of having the circle going around on this horizontal axis, you'll see it more on the vertical axis. Okay? So, go over here. Let's turn on the oscilloscope. So, on the oscilloscope, when you have it in the XY mode, this is already set up. You see the dot is right in the middle. So, 
the deflection of that dot is by the voltage that's applied on the X and the Y inputs. So you no longer have the sweep on the oscilloscope, but your voltage uh, range on the two channels is still active. And that basically will set the sensitivity and we'll take a look at those adjustments when we get into some of the testing. So I'll turn on the uh, isolation transformer. There we go. So again, we have an open right here on these test leads. And when you have this horizontal line right there, that just represents that open. Now, if I take these test leads and I just short them together like so, you can see, then we have that vertical line. So those are the two extremes and you can easily use this for continuity testing, just going between those two measurements. Now, of course, you're not getting any actual measurements of resistance, but you're, it's basically a go, no go type test. So let me grab this uh, digital multimeter here because there is something important to point out about the voltage on this test setup. You can see that right there. Get that display in there like that. All right, so if I make a connection across the, where the component would go right here, these test leads. So you can see on the uh, voltmeter, it's 6.6 .6 volts. This is 6.3 volts, but of course it's a little bit higher because it's not loaded. So 6.6 .6 volts, and no change here because this is very high in, uh, input impedance. So it basically looks like an open to this uh, test setup. But keep in mind that the open circuit voltage on here will be basically the uh, voltage that's on the secondary of this transformer. So if you have a very delicate component that could be damaged by a voltage of that level, of course you wouldn't want to be doing the test. But most components won't have any problem you know, being tested with this setup. But just keep in mind that voltage you know, and the, the, the amount that it uh, basically puts out on the circuit. Now if I come down here, this meter has a low impedance mode. So this does load this setup and you can see now we have this angle or slanting line right here, which represents some sort of a, a resistance that's here. And of course, it doesn't tell you what that resistance is, but we do know that there is some resistance. This could be calibrated uh, by taking a resistance measurement and knowing what the angle is, but for now it's basically just a, you know, a representation that there is some resistance. But you can see when this is loaded down, now it's just two and a half volts AC because there's voltage that drops on this resistor right here. All right. So I'll take that back off again. So with the idea of just using this as a continuity tester, if I have a toggle switch like this and you wanted to test that, you could just clip this in here like so. And then turn the switch on and off. Then you would be able to confirm that yes, the switch or maybe it's a set of relay contacts or something like that. Are, you know, they're switching and there is no problem whatsoever because if there was a high resistance across those contacts, of course, you would get that slanting line on here. So that's one example of what you can use this for, for a, just a simple a continuity test. Now here's a resistor. It is, uh, let's see, this is a 2.2 K ohm resistor. And connect that on there like so. So 2.2 K ohms, and you can see we have a sloping line. So if we take a look at a potentiometer, this is a 10K potentiometer. So if I go right here, just go to the center right there. If I rotate the potentiometer, you can see how it causes that line to rotate. So let's take a look at when you test a capacitor. So here is, let's see, a 0.47 microfarad. All right. So that's just going off the ends of the display a little bit there. So if we go down uh, like so, you can see how you can change the range or the scale that comes up on the display. But you get that circle uh, pattern and that's of course what a good capacitor will show. So now let's test a much larger value capacitor. So this capacitor here is, let's see, uh, 50 volts at 1000 microfarad. So at first you might say, oh, well, it's a defective capacitor. We're not getting the correct reading, but you can actually change the scale don't want to do that. That was okay. A 
little bit too far. There we go. So by using the range on the two uh, inputs, you can scale things appropriately. So no problem with that capacitor. Measure is perfectly fine. Now again, this is not telling you anything about the actual capacitance value. It's basically just a quick go, no go type test. Now it is possible to test inductors as well. So here's a inductor right here. So let's change this range here. There you go. Now, keep in mind, if you do a test with an inductor, this is 60 hertz because this is a 60 hertz transformer on a 60 hertz AC line. So inductors are, of course, affected by that uh, frequency. So uh, some inductors may not give expected results or they'll look like an open or a short or different things like that. But in this case, this inductor does give a reading. And I have another inductor right here, much different looking type of inductor. Typical of what you'd find in possibly a radio or something like that. So let's see here if we go. There we go. All right, now let's test a diode. And I would say that this tester is probably most often used for testing diodes and semiconductor junctions because of the information that you can gain quickly with the test. It'll show you if the diode or the transistor and so forth is functioning correctly. Again, you're not getting specific readings, but you can quickly tell in circuit in many cases if the component is faulty or not. So let's take a quick look at this first diode. So if I connect the diode right here, like so let's change this range here. All right, and that's how a good diode should look on the display. And if I take the diode and I just flip it around, the display will just turn the other direction, like so. See, just turns the other way. But now, let's take a closer look at what happens when we vary the voltage with the variac. So I'm going to turn this all the way down, and you can see how that just shrinks all the way down. And then when the variac is turned to zero, so there's no input voltage now, we're back to just a center dot. I'm going to set this down here to... 500 millivolts per division. Okay. And now I'm going to increase this up just a little bit. So the variac is just barely turned on and you can see we start to get some activity. And notice what we see right here. That knee right there and how we start to get the deflection that goes in the vertical direction. So let's shrink that back down again and look at that a little bit closer. So if we start where the dot is right there, we come over right there, that's where the diode begins to conduct, okay? So what that actually shows us is that from this dot in the center, we're one division over, and that's where the, you know, this begins to conduct. Well, this is at 500 millivolts per division, so basically at about a half a volt, this diode begins to conduct, and that's perfectly reasonable. So you're able to see when the uh, forward current in the, uh, when the, the diode basically turns on and is conducting. And of course, if you zoom this in even closer, I could go like so, let's go like that. Make that even more sensitive. That's 200 millivolts per division. Let's see how that comes out there. Again, that's that forward current, and when the diode is conducting, then that begins to go in the uh, vertical direction. So you're able to measure the voltage drop on that diode. Now, take that back off. Let's take a look at a Zener diode. Drop this back down on those two ranges. Do the same thing here. Oh, I'm gonna have to go down. Gonna have to go a little bit further. There we go. And that's how a good Zener diode should look. 
So instead of just having the one knee in one direction, you also have the knee in the reverse direction as well. And again, if you take a look at the scale, and this is on two volts per division, you can see when the, di uh, when the Zener diode begins to conduct. So very useful for component testing, and verifying that it's working correctly. And here's a much larger type of diode right here. So I'm going to go back here to 5 volts on that one and that. Bring this back up here. So again, a power semiconductor like this. Typical indication, exactly what you'd expect to see. And again, just turning this around the other direction, just flips the display around like so. And let's take a look at testing a transistor. So this is a typical uh, TIP3055 power transistor. So in a transistor like this, the tab is also the collector, and the collector is the center terminal. So we can verify that by just making a connection like so. And going to the center right here. So when we see a vertical line like that, we know that the tab is in fact connected to the collector. So now if we go over here, so if I go from the collector to the base, we should see a diode drop or diode junction, and yes we do. And if I go from the collector to the emitter, it should be an open, and yes it is. And if we go from the base to the emitter, it should be another diode junction right there, and yes it is. So just that simple to test a transistor, and that test could typically be done in circuit in many cases, as long as there's not other components around it that are drastically affecting that transistor. But in many cases, again, you can test in circuit with this. You would see this uh, junction, and you'd be able to verify that it is, in fact, okay. So I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of how this component tester can be built from just a couple components. And if you did enjoy this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. There'll be many more videos coming up in the near future. So thank you for watching, and until next time, take care, and goodbye for now.